Welcome to the Classy Podcast by Class 101. I'm Angela Sun, and with me is Pluvius. Hi, I'm a self-taught anime artist. Drawing anime has been my hobby since my childhood days, but throughout growing up, I grew up the traditional way, and when the time came to choose my degree for college, I went the traditional way and studied engineering, and I did two degrees, both bachelor's and master's, and worked in the field for a few years until I realized this is not really what I want to do for the rest of my life. I mean, I never enjoyed it, and I felt that I wanted to quit so many times, but I didn't have the courage, and also the situation was not suitable for me to quit. But since I love art, I never quit doing that. I was always doing it on the side as a hobby because I was practicing so much when the opportunity came to share my artworks with the world on the internet, I didn't hesitate to post my artworks. So I've been online posting my artworks since 2008. That makes it 14 years now. <laughs> and throughout time, my audience grew and I started getting more recognized and also my skills grew with time. So these two factors helped me reach a decision two years ago where I decided to quit engineering once and for all and just focus on being a full-time artist. My work revolves around drawing my webtoon as well as content creation for social media and my YouTube channels. I'm currently in a transitioning phase from content creation to full-time comic art because I realize that's what I enjoy the most and that's what I really want to do. How's Entwined going? So Entwined has been going well so far. I'm thankful that it has received such a great audience. I've released 14 chapters so far. Story-wise, I'm getting really excited because I just got done with the introductory arc and now the actual plot is starting. So really, <laughs> now is the most exciting part. However, this year, I would say in 2022, the production kind of slowed down because I got busy with content creation as well as Class 101 production. That kind of slowed down my pace. And I also took a two months break <laughs> because I was getting overwhelmed from all the work I've done. But now that my break is done and I'm back, I really want to get back to creating my comic and hopefully try to escalate the process and proceed with the events and the plot. What do you like the most about engaging with your followers on social media, especially YouTube, where you have such big presence? When it comes to YouTube, because I've been doing it for so long, many people came and went throughout the years. But the nice thing and the amazing and heartwarming thing is all those stories and messages that I receive every now and then from people who used to watch me or are still watching me. Like there are so many inspiring stories, how they got inspired by my art and how it helped them in, in their own journeys and how it helped them improve. It's always those stories that make me feel I'm so thankful, despite all the struggles and the difficulties I face as a sole content creator. These people and these stories are what warm my heart and make me want to keep going. Ever since I started publishing Entwined, I get really excited to see the feedback of my audience. With every chapter, there are so many comments coming and they're so excited with the events and sharing their insights. Many of the followers also draw me fan arts for my characters and really every time I receive one, I feel just so happy. That sounds amazing. Yeah, I'm really grateful for all the kindness my audience shows. I'm really thankful for their support. Let's go back to the beginning of your career and talk about you taking the leap of faith from engineering to becoming a full-time digital artist. Could you elaborate a little bit on when you were going through this two years ago? What was it like? Was it scary? Or were you feeling pretty confident because you had high engagement around your artwork as social proof? It was both hard and easy. It was easy because I knew that I just can't take it anymore with the engineering path. And I just want to do what I love because I didn't have the time for it for, for long years. But it was also hard because I used to think social media is very tricky. Even if you have a huge following, social media algorithms keep changing. And if you just stop posting for a while or disappear a little bit, then people just forget about you. I had certain expectations, but when I came back to practice full time, I started noticing the difference between my expectations of performance and the reality because social media is always changing. 
but I have no regrets when it comes to that. As I mentioned earlier, I spent all those years in engineering and during school and high school days. I always had drawing on the side, like I would just sketch on my textbooks and I was known in the classroom, like uh, the artist of the class and things like that. It's always been like, I'm just thinking about stories in my head and art and I'm living in my own <laughs> fantasy world. Yeah, it must have felt a little freeing to just do what you love to do every day. It is, but it also comes with a cost because mm -hmm. your hobby becomes your full-time job. And <laughs> like now you need to find other hobbies because you could overwork yourself so easily. I've really experienced this ever since I started drawing my comic. I was getting so excited about it and I just went draw and draw and I ended up being affecting my health for a while. So I was like, okay, <laughs> we need to step back a bit and find more life-work balance. Yeah, it's like a double-edged sword, isn't it? It is. Life is about finding the balance. The regular maintenance of it is really important, especially to artists. Was there anything that you remember telling yourself during this period when you were just starting as a full-time artist? As an artist, self-doubt existed since the start. I think this is universal for most artists. Like We think we're not good enough, no matter how good we get at our skills. So there was this feeling of, I'm not good enough, am I going to make it, and things like that. But before actually transitioning to a full-time artist, I was asking myself constantly, what do I want? When people ask you, what's your dream? I know my dream, I know it very well, but I just kept shoving it aside. So there came this really important point in time where I just asked myself, like, what are my priorities? And if I have dreams and if I know exactly what my dreams are, then I better just make them a reality because if I don't, then who's going to make that a reality? When it comes to dreams, I knew for the longest time that my dream is to make Entwined into a comic or like someday I dream of having it as like a TV show. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's outside my control. But what's in my control is to make it a comic or make it a full project. I knew that very well, but I kept denying it. So I was like, mm -hmm. just screw it. I'm just, I'm going to do my best. Like, since I have the means for it and I was ready, I didn't just take a leap of faith without having a calculated risk. I already had, you know, the financial stability that could allow me to, to make this transition. I honestly, obviously don't advise to just leave everything and start from zero and just take it as a challenge. You need to have it planned out a little bit before you just take that leap of faith. My next questions are more towards your course on Class 101. Before we start talking about your course, are there any classes you'd be interested in taking on our platform? Yes, so many actually. Like every time I go on the front page, I'm like, oh my God, I'd like to try this and that. But I would Aww. say if I could, I would mainly take every class relevant to anime, art styles and backgrounds, as well as, of course, comic creations. The artist's works are just amazing and you'd love to learn from each and every one of them. Oh, that's so, I'm so glad to hear that. What's the biggest motivation behind launching the anime style webtoon class with us? I was considering making an online course about webtoon drawing before class 101 approached me. The main motivation for me to create courses other than teaching, of course, is as an independent and self-employed artist, I'm always looking for ways to invest my time and energy into a passive flow of income so that I can sustain myself and I can work on the things that I love. Since I was thinking of making a course and I had already decided on a webtoon class, when Class 101 approached me and mentioned that they are interested in creating a webtoon class with me, I was like, this is the perfect opportunity. I got so excited and it gave me a push, honestly, because I could have just delayed the class, not now, maybe later or whenever I'm free. But it just gave me that push and I started working on it and without realizing it's live and ready. Let's talk about your process of outlining the curriculum, recording the chapters and then editing it. What was that experience like, including the last leg of it, marketing on social media? The whole process took about three months. We started with the campaign on my social media and I was glad to see that many people are actually interested in learning from my methods. As per the Class 101 methods, planning the curriculum was made after taking the feedback of my audience on what things they would like to learn and what are they interested in learning from my methods. After seeing this feedback, I came up 
with the plan for the course. And I tried to include as much as possible for the students to have the full experience, like from zero till publishing. And I even went the extra step and explained about after publishing, organizing your workflow and documenting your workflow and monetizing your webtoon and things like that. Topics that are not really drawn related, but that are nevertheless a really necessary part of the whole process. People who are planning to become webtoon artists, digital artists, are really curious about the stuff you just mentioned because it's one of those things that you never know until you're in the industry actually doing the work. When it comes to the production of the course, the best skill that I acquired was quick and quality production. When I started making online courses before, I would write a script for each lesson and then record the script and then put them together and then do the video editing. So it was a hectic process for every single video. But this time with Class 101 course, I tried a new style where I start drawing and start explaining my process. So as I'm drawing, I explain and record. So it's all done in one go. So it felt more natural. And that way I was just ready to edit the video after I was done. That helped me not just with the speed of production, but also it made me give more information to the students because, you know, as you're naturally working, you'll naturally say out more comments. This was a, a very positive step and I hope this helped the students learn more. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about your coursework. Addressing beginner artists, which techniques do you recommend that they work on? Whether you're a beginner artist or a, you know, a professional artist, when it comes to drawing comics, you would want to increase your speed as much as possible because, you know, every chapter has a lot of panels and you just have to draw so many different artworks. Of course, the more you draw, the quicker you'll get at it. But again, technology allows us more ways to escalate our sketching speed. Personally, I'm still learning as I go, but I've found that certain methods have helped me sketch faster. One of them is that for each chapter, I plan it through a storyboard and through this planning phase, I sketch, I make quick rough drafts or sketches of my panels, even if they looked crappy, but at least I capture the composition of the panel so that when the sketching phase comes, I just draw on top of it and refine the sketch so that I don't have to start from a blank canvas. And also, as I sketch the panel neatly, I make use of transformation tools in Clip Studio Paint and also the Liquify tool. These really help modify my sketch and I keep, you know, flipping the canvas to check how it's looking and correct any mistakes as I go. And of course, I make use of other assets like 3D models, using asset sheets and creating asset sheets for my characters. Let's talk about backgrounds. You mentioned 3D models for creating backgrounds and say that beginner artists find it challenging to create backgrounds. Why do you think that is? And if there's a foolproof way to create backgrounds for webtoon artists? Backgrounds are challenging for most character artists. I would say it's more challenging because as a character artist, you would spend the majority of your time practicing and honing your skills in drawing the human figure and anatomy and things like that. When it comes to backgrounds, it's, it's the less interesting part. That's why it's scary because we never give ourselves the chance to just delve into it like we did with character drawing. The way to tackle this is that just learning at least the basics of backgrounds, the basic rules of perspective. And after learning that, then you can make use of 3D models and pre-drawn image assets and brushes and mash everything together to create a background. That's the way I've been managing the backgrounds in my webtoon because it's the quickest process. And I would say that I'm also not a professional background artist, but this way I've been able to create backgrounds without compromising quality. Are there any tips on delivering your character's emotions in expressive ways? You need to feel them inside of you as you're drawing them. For example, when an artist is drawing an angry expression, then they make an angry face because you're, because you're actually feeling that emotion as you're drawing it. As you draw those emotions, it's good to refer to real life photos for those expressions. When it comes to the rendering process and creating comics throughout the coloring phase, playing with the color palettes really help deliver the mood, how red signals danger and blue signals gloom. Playing with those colors can give certain emotions to your readers. And also playing with the text size and shape can really help the tone of the character's speech. And playing around with backgrounds and things like that. You can do so many things in comics. 
Gotcha. Could you talk a little bit about adding lighting and effects in relation to the mood of the webtoon and also the character's emotions? Yes, yeah, similarly, color palette here is also important. And adding dramatic lighting really enhances the mood of the scene by having a high contrast between the colors and especially between warm and cool tones and adding backlighting with white backgrounds can help deliver different emotions based on the context, of course, whether it's warmth or confusion or tension, and making use of the software's layer modes to add lighting and using color adjustment layers and things like that. What have you learned since you started creating Entwined last year? I learned so much. One of my biggest goals was to use it as an opportunity to improve my drawing skills, and that actually happened, and my drawing speed also got like much quicker than before. Now it's easier for me to draw harder poses and easier to draw the image as I see it in my head. I can do backgrounds much better now thanks to the comic. Again, I'm still learning as I go and I'm really looking forward to see what I can do a year from now and so on. That's always going to be exciting, right? Thinking about a year ahead, a few years ahead. Yeah, it's always yeah. exciting, especially in webtoons, like you see uh, the improvement in the artist's style. So it's always mm -hmm. exciting to compare between the start and now. Since you started in Twine last November, I bet there's been times where you feel overwhelmed or exhausted. Even when it's something you love to do, we can all identify feeling that way. What do you like to do to relax? How do you deal with artist block? Yeah, I would say that an art block is basically a mental state and it comes out of stress. So when that happens, I just take a break from anything art related altogether and also step away from social media related to the artist's community. I just disconnect for some time. I try to meditate, exercise, socialize and practice my other hobbies. And if I want to get back to drawing, I just draw stress-free stuff, like just grab a paper and a pencil and practice drawing poses and things like that without any expectations. By letting go, I naturally return to drawing without realizing. Because it's something you love to do. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any exciting news for Entwined or um, are there any other interesting projects outside of Entwined? When it comes to merch, I'm already selling some merch on my Redbubble store. I really want to expand on that and add more variety in the products and that's within my upcoming plans. But it's also almost the first anniversary of Entwined when I first launched it on Webtoon on August 1st. So for that, I'm looking forward to take some time to make a commemorating illustration though I haven't decided the theme yet. And also, as a project, I'd love to publish a paperback version of Entwined, in, like in volumes. I'm currently in the research and experimental phase on how to take this step because it's my first time, but I'm really excited for that. And like the, the idea that one day I can yeah. hold this story in my yeah, hands. Yeah, a physical <laughs> book. Yeah, or yeah. Books. yeah. Yeah, I wish that me is... luck with that. <laughs> yeah, good luck. I'm sure it'll come out amazing. Thank and you. And designing the cover image for it and everything, it's going to be really exciting. Just yeah, thinking it's... about it. Yeah, it is. It is. Can't wait for that. What do people learn from taking your Class 101 course? My class would help those artists that have stories in mind and have the characters and everything planned out in their head and maybe in their documents, but haven't taken that step towards making it a reality. So for those artists, my course provides a walkthrough plan from the planning stage of your chapters, through, like by storyboarding each chapter, setting up the work files so that you're ready to sketch and line and color and backgrounds and lighting and color adjustments, we go through all of that throughout the course from A to Z, such that by the end of the course, you'll be ready to publish your own complete chapter. I also share the process on how to publish your webtoon on two different platforms, Webtoon Canvas as well as Tapas, and how to export your chapter and, you know, have everything ready while maintaining great quality and even the steps to take afterwards to market your webtoon and monetize it and things like that. Growing your audience on social media yes. using your artworks. Yes. Yes. Amazing. I think it's been such an insightful interview. I think listeners will have a lot to take away from. Is there anything you'd like to add to this interview? 
I'd just like to thank my audience again that they have supported me so much. Like I wouldn't have been able to make it as an independent and full-time artist without their support. So I'm really thankful for that. And for newcomers, you can read my modern fantasy webcomic Entwined on Webtoon Canvas and Tapas. I publish there at least a chapter per month. And I would be very happy if you read it and enjoy it and join me with this journey as I create Entwined. You're more than welcome to follow me on my social media for updates on the creation journey of Entwined and for in-depth updates on behind the scenes as well as early access of my chapters, you can find them on my Patreon page. You can find all my social media under my pen name, Pluvius. Thank you so much, Angela, for this opportunity and for this lovely interview. It's truly been a privilege to chat with you about this and I'm very happy we could have this opportunity. Thanks so much for taking the time again. It was a pleasure to talk with you. Thanks, you too. Bye. Thanks. Bye. This podcast is produced by Class 101 and hosted by me, Angela Sun. You can check out Pluvius's class on anime-style webtoons on class101.co. Thanks for listening.